right. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. We are a webinar, a webcast, an online show. Uh, the terminology is up for debate. Um, but whatever you want to call us, we are here live online every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. Uh, if you are unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. We do record the show every week, and we post that on our website as well. And I'll show you that uh, where that is and where you can find that um, at the end of today's show. Both our live show and our recordings are free and open to anyone to watch, so please do share with any of your uh, colleagues, uh, friends, neighbors, family, anybody who you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Uh, our focus here on Encompass Live is libraries. Uh, that's pretty much our only criteria. Anything we have on um, is something related to libraries, something libraries are doing, something that they could be doing, um, services or products that may be of, uh, of use to them. Uh, we do a mixture of things. There's interviews, book reviews, mini training sessions, uh, web tours. Uh, basically, as I said, anything that is library related we have on the show. Uh, we do have Nebraska Library Commission staff sometimes uh, do come on and do presentations for us for things that we are doing here locally in Nebraska um, or through the Library Commission, but we also do bring on guest speakers as we have this morning. Um, on the line with us from just a little bit up, up the road, up the highway, <laughs> is Lindsay Tamsu, who's from our La Vista Public Library. Good morning, Lindsay. Hi. Good morning. And she's the team coordinator up there, has been doing lots of good things, lots of great things at uh, La Vista over the years, um, and has been on the show a few times before. And she's got a new project she's been doing with her teens and tweens that she's going to tell us about, this uh, Build Collective. And I think I'll just hand it over to you, Lindsay, to explain exactly what that is and what that means. Okay. Um, hello, everybody. Um, I presented this at the annual NLA conference back in October with two of my actual teens and Krista wanted to come but didn't get a chance to make it so she wanted to see if I would do a webinar version of it which was pretty interesting because my teens and I just winged the whole thing so I had to make an actual visual presentation. Um, oh, the reason no why idea. Oh, well. <laughs> The reason I'm why we kind of winged it was because we were more interested in actually showing off some of our toys in the Build Collective. So instead, I've got some slides to kind of just show you everything that we're doing, and hopefully I cover everything. <laughs> so, okay, let's see. Basically, the creation of the Build Collective. Um, not... Or was it last year? Okay, yeah, it was last year. Um, last school year, right after the end of the 2015 summer, um, my teens and I discovered the Disney Curiosity Creates grant that was opened for the first time. It was basically a $7,000 grant to do anything that revolved around curiosity. And so I approached my teen advisory board and I asked them for ideas because we've won a lot of grants over the years to do large scale things that we'd never be able to do with the regular funding that we have. And so they sat down and they brainstormed and one idea that they hit on was simply a Lego club to the extreme. And so that's how we kind of describe the Build Collective in under 60 seconds. <laughs> and so their idea was Legos involve a lot of creativity and building, but most everybody has Legos. You know, they're relatively cheap, you know, for parents to buy and be able to afford, but there's a lot of other toys out there that deal with a building theme that, you know, you could go up to a Learning Express store and they're much more expensive. So not everyone has had a chance to play with those goodies. So they decided that they wanted to focus this grant on the idea of creating a build collective. So that, of course, came to the whole idea of what are we going to actually call this? And so my teens, they love acronyms, they love puns, they love alliteration. So one of my boys, Peyton, sat down for about 45 minutes and tried to figure out an acronym for the word build. And so it officially stands for Building to Uphold Imagination and Learning Daily. So the Build Collective. <laughs> so when we ended up doing the Disney Cur Curiosity Creates grant, 
we said that the essential goal of the Build Collective is to provide tweens and teens, which at my library is fourth grade through twelfth grade, with educational toys based around the common theme of building that would foster their sense of imagination and help them become more creative individuals. And so next comes the slides with a lot of information and I'm sorry but this is our super fancy non 60 second explanation. <laughs> Basically the idea for the Build Collective would be to attain three goals. First, that all tweens and teens would come to the library and just have fun by giving them a chance to play with a wide range of educational building kits and toys and letting them just have free play with them. Or being a little more structured and giving them challenges to complete, which will allow them to basically relax and have fun in a creative and educational environment without necessarily knowing that it's educational. <laughs> the second goal is to educationally encourage those tweens and teens to understand engineering concepts and be able to think, create, and explore with structures in a 3D environment. And the last goal is to encourage those tweens and teens to think more critically about design and problem solving skills, which would result in an increased confidence level and an ability to pr approach such tasks when faced with them in the real life world. So, next slide. Overall, basically, the idea for the Build Collective is that it would increase the use of such skills by allowing the teens the ability to create objects and structures and Based on the success of those experiences, it'll lead, lead those tweens and teens to have a greater desire and interest in the concepts that they're learning and also increase their overall creativity and imaginations in general. And so that's where the whole Build Collective came from. And so the grants, back again. The Curiosity Creates one was a very detailed, in-depth grant. I think our actual application was about 40 pages long total. We unfortunately did not get that one. But my teens and tweens were so excited about the possibility of the Build Collective that they wanted to keep going at it to try to find funding. So we ended up applying for a Baker and Taylor Summer Reading Program grant for $3,000. We didn't get that one. Then we did the Yalza slash Dollar General Summer Learning Grant for $1,000. We did get that one back in last March. And then we also applied for the ALA FIAN Award which is kind of this all-encompassing library award by ALA that can go for anything and everything. And we actually requested $3,500 and they gave us $5,000. So we ended up at the beginning of last summer going into it with $6,000 to fund the Build Collective total. <laughs> so, so it was a lot of money. <laughs> so we thought, okay, what kind of toys do we want to get for the collective? And we basically came up with a variety of different categories which help us, you know, categorize <laughs> the toys. So these include abstract toys, architecture related toys, life-size toys, magnetic toys, toys that involve kinesthetic construction, STEM and robotic toys, traditional building toys, unusual building toys, and your average everyday crafts that can be used as building toys. So this was the part of the presentation in person where we actually showed you things. So for the online version, I'm going to talk about each of these categories, what they mean, and show you two of my team's favorite toys in each category. Um, one caveat I do want to mention is that some of these things are expensive, but we bought everything primarily through Amazon. So while I list the retail prices, we probably paid half that cost. So it was much, much cheaper than it might seem. <laughs> so our first category is the abstract ones. We defined these toys as being able to build with oddly shaped elements that result in more abstract constructions and not necessarily readily identifiable objects. So someone could say that they built a cat, but it probably would not look like a cat, basically. And so two of their favorite ones are joinks, which they retail for about $50. You get 76 pieces, and they're pretty simple. They're just rubber connectors and wooden sticks. So here you can kind of see the example is kind of a dome-shaped object. <laughs> but that's basically what the set is. So it, it really you know, encourages creativity to build something when basically you've got three types of elements to work with. 
The next one that they really enjoy is the squigs. We have a deluxe set. We also have a bender set. Um, the deluxe set retails for about $50. You get 50 pieces with it. And basically what it is is suction cups. So you get to build with the suction cups. You know, they have the fun little suction-y cuppy sounds when you're pulling them apart that the teens just enjoy. You know, yes, occasionally they will also throw them at walls and get them stuck at walls while they're building. <laughs> but these are really fun because, once again, you build weird, unusual things. And the squigs come in a variety of different sets. So you've got a basic starter set, you've got the deluxe set, you've got the binders, which help you obviously be able to bend your constructions a little more. And they even have little mini versions as well. So the next category, oh, sorry, I had one more under here. <laughs> also under abstract is the Zooms. The biggest set that you can get retails for about $70 and has 500 pieces. Basically, these are just click-based building. You've got these little, as you can see, like on the end of this lizard's little tail, that red piece. It's basically a ball, a little cylinder shape, and another ball, and they all connect together. And you've got... Uh, the ball shaped ones and then you've got the little connector bitty ones and you just build like crazy. Um, these ones are really interesting because they do come with highly detailed instruction booklets that teach you how to make everything from a 10 part piece all the way up to using all 500 pieces. So there's lots of options, lots of availability to just build like crazy and you can see this one's kind of a lizardy shape. <laughs> also, um, while we have the really big set, they do come in smaller sets, and they also have special design sets, too. So if you want to focus on a specific element, like I think they have a robot one. So lots of different options with the Zoobs. So the next category. Um, yes. Uh, let's see, no, I just want to miss, let everyone know, um, for anyone who's you know trying to keep track of all of these uh, different sets and, <laughs> and things that you guys got, I am, as she's going along, grabbing, um, looking up all of these and finding links to the main pages about them. Um, so they'll be included in the recording um, um, archives afterwards. We collect any websites that are mentioned. Um, I also did grab the ones for all the different grants that you both tried to get and did get. <laughs> so um, afterwards, you'll all get a, a, a email that will tell you have a, a collection of all of these places together. Um, I'm grabbing just their main um, product pages, but as Lindsay said, I'm also coming up and you just Google these with being able to buy them at places like, like Amazon and Target and Walmart and stuff. So you know you can do your shopping on your own, but at least getting you to the main page about the different toys and, and products. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So the next category is the architecture category. This is basically what you think when you think architecture. It's the more traditional things like actually building buildings, dealing with floor plans, all that kind of stuff. Um, we wanted to include this in the Build Collective because we do have a variety of teens and tweens who are interested in actual architecture concepts and um, are interested in possibly doing a future career as an architect. So one of their favorite ones is the Scientific Explorer Young Architect. It retails for about $50, and you basically get to design a home in 3D. So if you're like me and you love floor plans and you can spend hours looking at floor plans, this is the toy you want to play with. It's reusable. It includes different room templates, furniture guides, and everything for you to be able to design your own building or future home. <laughs> uh, another one that they really like is the Amusement Park Engineer. These are actually made more toward preschool ages, as you can see by it saying ages three and up. But my teens and tweens love them. The Amusement Park Engineer retails for about $70. And it's exactly what it sounds like. It shows you instructions for building all different kinds of rides that you would find at an amusement park. And they're all fully functional and they work. Um, it's uh, 97 pieces and they're really big and clunky and easy to build with. And if you do want to have like a build collective for the younger kids, these um, kids first sets are really fun because the instruction booklet is also a story as well. So they can read the story about the little characters and learn things in a fun manner. So I then love the next that that one is actually becomes a working roller coaster. That seems Oh yeah. <laughs> they love the Ferris wheel that you can put eyeballs on. It's it's very cute. <laughs> so the third category is the life size category and this is primarily our fort building kits. And in other words, anything that we end up incorporating that makes a life size construction of something. 
These guys are the Discovery Kids Fort Construction Kits. You can get them at Walmart for under 20 bucks. Each one comes with 72 pieces. It's primarily the sticks and then the little balls. And it's fort building for all ages, basically. My teens love them so much that we have 16 of these sets. Because obviously when you get with teens, they're taller than the little ones. So you need more than one set to adequately play with them. And I've got some pictures later on that show you some of the creations that my teens have done. Because also when dealing with needing to build bigger structures, the structural integrity of the fort will start to collapse the bigger you make it. So you have to be pretty smart and think about how to construct it properly so it doesn't collapse on you. <laughs> no, you don't want the roof to fall in on you when you're in the middle of it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Because those balls do hurt. They, they are pretty hard plastic. <laughs> the next category is the magnetic elements. So these would be any structures that the teens and tweens create that are held together with toys that are magnetic. So these allow for a lot of really creative designs that will defy gravity. One of their favorite ones is the Tengu blocks. These are extremely expensive, but they are super high quality. The biggest set, which is 42 pieces, retails at about $110. But they do come in smaller sets. They're colorful. They're very beautiful and super strong magnets, so they're fun to play with. And like I said, usually Amazon has this set occasionally for like $30, $40 instead. You know, we did not pay $110 for it. <laughs> um, the next one is the Kinesthetic Construction. These are any toys that involve actual movement elements. So one of their favorite ones is the Neo Tracks. I think my teens have said that they've seen this advertised on TV. <laughs> um, a basic set retails for about $25. You get nearly 300 pieces. There are a lot of different add-on sets and glow-in-the-dark options. And they come with battery-operated cars. So you can basically build this whole little Hot Wheels type track and then set your car on it to see how well it accomplishes everything. Um, other things that are involved in kinesthetic construction is um, there's also Rube Goldberg type um, sets that you can purchase that you can make Rube Goldberg type machines. Basic dominoes also work in this element. And then you get the marble runs. This is one of our more expensive marble ones we have, the Fisher Technic Dynamic Fun with Physics. <laughs> this one retails for about $150. It is a lot of pieces. The instruction booklet tells you how to make basic ones, but it's also, you know, easy to create your own as well. And while this is one of the higher end sets for marble runs, there are a lot of other cheaper versions available as well. And even some, I think, by Connects that you can get at Walmart for like $30. So there's a lot of variety when it comes to marble runs. The next category, of course, is the STEM and the robotics stuff. So this is where you get the building sets that incorporate some type of technical know-how instruction. So whether that's electronics, lights, motion, sound, etc. It can also involve some um, programming elements, too. So you can teach teens how to program and code. Um, obviously, most libraries know about you know the common ones like Snap Circuits, Makey Makey, the Spiro robot. Two of my teens' favorite ones are the Meccano Meccanoids, and the, they did sell these at Walmart for a while. Uh, they could retail between $40 to $100. There's multiple robots and other creatures to choose from, including a, an actual three-foot-tall dinosaur, which is pretty amazing. And one of the great things about these little robots is that they deal with LMI programming, which means learned intelligent movement. So what basically that means is you can program them to mimic and follow and learn from things that you do, which is really cool. So obviously you can see he's waving. So someone probably waved at him and programmed him to learn that movement. So that's really fun. And their favorite is the Meeposaur. He retails at about $70. You can usually get him on Amazon for about $30. There's also a mini version that you can get at Target that's only $20. And one of the things that I personally love about Meeposaur is unlike Sphero, you do not have to have phone access and access to an app to control him. While you can download the app and do other things, that little trackball that he's playing with is all you need out of the box to play with him and have fun. 
Um, there's other little versions available too. He also has a robot friend. They talk to each other, kind of like old school Furbies. You know, you get one, they chat to each other. He can chat with his friends. And he's so adorable. He has a lot of personality. He's like a chillant little two year old. You can do everything from feed him to have him go for walks to he has a teddy bear on his trek ball so he'll make little coochie coochie sounds to him and love him he is the cutest little thing and he also kind of has a lear in an internal learning element as well so the more you play with him the more you discover new and different things that he's capable of doing and then, of course, there's the traditional building sets. These are the ones that your teens are probably familiar with and have probably played with, such as Legos. The favorite ones of my teens include some really cool Kinex sets that you can get at Walmart. Um, the Kinex K-Force subset, usually they retail about $20 or under. You get lots of pieces. There's lots of different models. There's everything from Nerf guns to bow and arrow kits to little dart guns. And the boys love these ones because they have to actually sit down and build their little, for lack of a better word, weapon. And then once they have it built, they can compete with their friends and have like a Nerf gun fight, basically. <laughs> so they love these ones. And then Tinker Toys, of course. Tinker Toys, you can get a big set for under 20 bucks. You can get a bigger one for over 20 bucks. There's lots of pieces. There's lots of models and things you can build with. And the big difference with how, with how Tinker Toys is made now is that they're all plastic instead of wood. So that's one difference from the traditional Tinker Toys. Hmm. I'm glad those they're still using those. I, I had those when I was a kid. Those were that and the uh, Lincoln Logs were the two favorites. Oh, yeah. We have I, Lincoln Logs, too. <laughs> Then the unusual category are the toys that we describe as being unusual because it's a texture, textile type feel, so they'll feel weird. But they're not necessarily abstract because you can still build identifiable objects with, with these guys. So this toy, um, on Amazon, if you Google the Imido building toy, this will come up. When we originally purchased it, we actually got it from China, and it came in a adorable little carry bag that was all in Chinese and all the instructions were in Chinese. <laughs> so all we could understand was that it was supposedly called click and play. So that's what my teens call this toy is the click and pay. Um, the retail seems to be about $15, but I have seen it possible to get this for like five bucks basically. Usually most of the sets come with over 200 pieces and the imagination is extremely needed for this one because like I said, our first set didn't even have any instructions in English. It had a few pictures, so it was all like trying to judge the spatial orientation in the picture and what parts are needed, how many parts do I need, and so you can create a lot of interesting things, and it's basically just sticks, circles, and triangles, <laughs> and very colorful, very fun. They also enjoy the card stackers, which I guess looks more like a game. It retails for about $30, you get over 800 cards, and it teaches you all these different ways to basically build card houses. And I know everyone's probably tried to build a triangular card house before at some point in their life. So this gives you instructions on how to do amazing designs. So they really like this one too. And then, oh, yeah, course, I can't even begin to think of how to make some of the things I'm seeing on the box there. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> wow. Without cheating, including glue. No. <laughs> and then lastly, of course, there are basic craft elements that you probably already have in your library that can be put into a build collective. My teens' favorite ones is your basic craft sticks. You can get a gigantic box at Dick Blick Art for cheap, you know, and I've listed all the different kinds that they have. Also, other things that my teens love to do, we had bought some dice for a craft that we never ended up using, so we threw the dice into the build collective. You know, they can stack the dice, they can build with the dice. You know, even things like pipe cleaners and, you know, just regular craft things that you have lying around, they can build with them, and they will find a way to build with them. <laughs> so, it's really cool. Um, I did want to mention two toys to avoid. Um, the Bunchums. While those are really fun and really unusual and different, 
Um, we do have one set. I only put them out when I know every single teen in that room and I know that they will be responsible because if you go to Amazon and you read the product reviews, you will be in absolute horror. These are like little cockaburs, basically. They have a little hook on the end of each one of those balls and if they get in your hair, you're going to have to chop your hair off. They are oh, that cute. Yeah, that looks like a real. <laughs> so, what is so, the four? Does that say four and up? No. It does, yeah. No, <laughs> so, I would not give that so to a four year old. It's angered a lot of parents. <laughs> it's made a lot of children cry, you know. And so, while it is fun, it's probably one you're going to avoid if you're doing a more open program and you don't know everyone who's coming. <laughs> the other one is the Light Bright. Everybody remembers Light Bright, that's one of the oh, traditional yeah. toys. We actually ended up um, having a raffle one summer that was 90s themed, and nobody ended up winning it. And so we decided, oh, hey, Light Bright, that's building. Let's throw it in the Build Collective. The quality of it nowadays is so horrible. You put the batteries in, it's brand new, it barely lights up. So we were extremely disappointed with the Light Bright. So we yes. would not recommend that one. <laughs> or find some older ones on like eBay exactly. or something, maybe from or the ones that we used. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, huh. don't go don't go with new Light Bright. <laughs> so then a little bit to talk about what we actually do with the Build Collective. Um uh, this is some of the stuff that we've done in the past year since we started getting all the materials last May. Um, we have basic just free play days where it's on the calendar as the Build Collective and we might bring out everything. We might just randomly grab some of our storage bins because we um, at Walmart to store everything in. Walmart has these nice big white rectangular storage bins with lids that have um, whiteboard labels on the front so you can change you know whatever's in it and they retail for about seven dollars I think and they stack nicely so we have them all stacked up so we might just grab random bins to bring out and um, one example is over the summer in August we had one of our free, free play days and my teens were making you know a really cool fort and everything and later that night our evening program was a library mini golf and they said do we have to destroy this can we incorporate it into the mini golf course and I was like yes so our free play ended up migrating into another program we also have specific challenges sometimes instead of just free play. So we might, you know, put them in groups, you know, to work as teams, to work on their team building skills and their project management skills and give them a challenge for something to build with a limited amount of the toys that they can play with. We've also, um, we haven't got to do this one yet, but it is on the calendar to do in the future. We want to have a builder's fair, basically, where we will have, you know, probably you know everything out the teens can build something and then we might have people from the community like an actual architect the library director maybe the mayor come and be judges and actually judge their creations and give out prizes for the best creations we also have theme play days so we might have a day where we just decide oh they just want to play with the forts so we're just gonna pull out the fort stuff or we might have a day where it's just robots and we just bring out all our robotic type stuff and then what we have also found is that there's also a lot of opportunities for just random miscellaneous play. Um, I've had um, before where um, I do a teen story time with my teens and we had a robot themed story time and at the end instead of doing a craft they said hey can we bring out our robots and just play with the robots and so Build a Collective became part of teen story time. Um, we also are looking into opportunities to do outreach as well because we understand we funded this solely by grants so not all other libraries are going to have that funding to start their own build collective on the scale that ours is so we would like to do outreach to schools and other libraries where we bring the build collective to you guys and kind of share the wealth basically. And so I have some photos. <laughs> um, say, Lindy, the, um, let's see, the, this also made me think of you were talking about um, doing reading programs and things. This year's summer reading program theme, this yes. totally leads right into it, is build a better world. <laughs> so you guys it, are all set for that already then. It coincided yes. pretty well, yeah. <laughs> um, the photo on the left is um, our first haul from the Fyan Award that we got right before summer started. So you can see a variety of the different things that we have, you know, lots of snap circuits, you know, 
you can see the Tengu blocks there, all kinds of different things that we have. The photo on the right is one of my boys, Eric. He's communing with the Sphero. He's talking to it, <laughs> having fun. <laughs> Ah, here's the click and play in action. One of my girls tried to follow the Chinese instructions to build a Ferris wheel and succeeded. So it actually works. It spins. All that fun. Ah, the photo on the right is one of my boys, Billy, after he built one of those connects dart guns. You know, and like I said, the boys love those. Oh, and also, these have extreme firing power you can our our meeting room is pretty darn big you can stand at the doors and shoot the little darts or the bow and arrow and it will go all the way across the room it is impressive <laughs> well, it, um, as compared to like the nerf you know pre-bought nerf ones nerf guns and things i think they go a little a, bit farther <laughs> sounds like they're a lot stronger yeah <laughs> it's it's impressive yeah and are the are the um actual projectiles something like that like a nerf yeah it's just a nerf a nerf thing yeah so you can easily if if you lose one you can easily go out buy some more nerf guard darts it's the mm -hmm. same thing basically yeah the little styrofoamy type oh, thing <laughs> yeah yeah um the top picture, um, once again, talking about Build Collective merging with other programs. Uh, a number of my teens had shown up early one day, and they decided to pull out the fort kit and build a fort to have story time in. So they built a big fort. We put you know, some of the chairs from the story time room in it. We had our story time in there, and now this is post-story time where they're enjoying some ramen dinner <laughs> in their beautiful fort. <laughs> I've also used the Build Collective with my homeschoolers, too. So the bottom picture is some of my homeschoolers just having some free play. Um, they're actually building one of those, I'm not a Star Wars person, but one of those really tall walker guys from Star Wars. <laughs> oh, the the yes, yeah. the yes. <laughs> so that's what they're, they're attempting to build there, and that came out pretty darn cool. <laughs> and then... <laughs> yeah. And then this so far is pictures of the biggest fort they've been able to construct without it collapsing. It is basically a four room house. It has a nice living area, as you can see, because they're playing a board game in it. It also comes with a kitchen and two bedrooms. And then outside, you can see Billy once again enjoying himself in the hot tub in the backyard. <laughs> So they love the fort building kits, and it's it's getting impressive watching them as they keep playing with them and learning how to adapt their structures so that they don't collapse on themselves. <laughs> so things that we learned, basically. Um, one, I can tell you right now, you do not need $6,000 to start a build collective at your library. We are actually running into the problem of not having enough things to buy with the money that we have. <laughs> um, with doing really good budgeting and shopping for the best prices, you can make your money go a long way. And, you know, you can also possibly, you know, consider, you know, talking to local stores, seeing if you can work a discount into it as well. So you, I don't want any of you guys to sit there and go, oh my god, I don't have $6,000 to start this. You can start small with the craft supplies that you already have in the library and just kind of go from there and build. Um, as I mentioned before, buy off of Amazon. That's what we pretty much did, and we saved 50% off most of the items that we have bought. Um, we're lucky that since we do have so much of the funds left over, we're going to be able to buy multiple sets of things that are really popular so that more teens can play with them at the same time. We've also discovered in the programs that we have done so far at the Build Collective is multi-age and multi-generational. Um, at the beginning of last summer, um, before our kickoff party, we kind of kicked off the Build Collective and had our first program for it. And we had teens come. Some of them brought some of their younger siblings and were playing and getting along with them. We had some parents stop in, and the parents were like, ooh, Play-Doh, you know, and they start playing with stuff, you know. So it's, it's, it can be open to all ages, you know. It doesn't have to be limited to just the tweens and teens. If you think your teens will like forts, you obviously need multiple kits. I've already established that. Um, the storage options, like I said, it depends on what your library has. Um, we basically have just a corner for all our stuff. So the stackable box, you know, the stackable 
tubs that we got work really well. You know, they're all uniform size. They stack real well. They label. So that's a good thing. And the biggest thing that we forgot is to buy batteries. Because, yeah, a lot of our robotics type things require batteries. And we went and we spent you know, the Yalza grant and we spent the first half of our Fian grant. And then we get everything. We start unboxing. We start storing. And then we go, we never bought batteries. Uh-oh. <laughs> so, so batteries are one of those things you might forget about. <laughs> and so then, pretty much, that is my presentation. I've got my contact info here. So if you want, um, I know after I gave the presentation at NLA, a lot of the librarians were contacting me asking for my actual list of all the items that we have. So I can provide you with that. If you have a special um, type of patrons that you work with and you're like, ooh, what do you think this age range would like the best? I can talk to you about the best of the best toys. So any questions, you can feel free to contact me. No problem at all. Great. So okay. that's it. Great. Thank you very much, Lindsay. That was awesome. Yeah, I wish I had been to, now that you said you actually brought the toy, some of the <laughs> some of the toys and stuff to the conference. I should have known that I should have gone to that session. <laughs> Yeah, you could have seen our little Mupasaur as he was walked around. That is the cutest thing, yes. <laughs> is, is a bit, I know, um, if anybody does have any questions, um, please type them into your questions section of your, uh, go to our, in our interface. We have plenty of time for questions for Lindsay. Um, this is a this is a great the, all the different um, resources you gave and everything. Of course, using Amazon and other places to purchase um, are great ideas. Unfortunately, as an aside, I'm looking at things that I want to buy for myself, which I just <laughs> will have to try and avoid. Um, we did get at our house the uh, the Sphero uh, BB-8, um, uh -huh. and you do you need to use your phone. You have to connect a phone to it to figure out and make it run and everything, mm -hmm. um, which is fine when it's just your own. But I like the fact that that one doesn't require having to connect some a particular person's phone and download any software that does yeah. make it much easier to use. Um, and um, another thing that I thought was very um, interesting, something important, and I think I hope a lot of people will see. Um, oh, we do have a question that came through. I'll ask this first. Ah, good question. Um, do you have any concern with any having insurance or liability issues with some of these toys? I'm thinking she might be thinking maybe about those uh, building forts, <laughs> potentially, <laughs> um, or does the library as usual? Um, insurance coverage or um, you know cover for anything you guys are doing I think I think the libraries basically covers it and like I said um, those things are pretty pretty sturdy in general too and we haven't actually had one collapse you know usually okay, I was gonna wonder to, like did yeah, you, you learn by, by practice that oh, oh no it just fell down on someone's head <laughs> no you, you start to see you know as, as as it'll start to bow in on itself and the teens will automatically jump at it and go oh god we have to fix this part you know so yeah. okay so yeah your your usual library insurance policies would cover mm -hmm. anything that they're doing with these and then if someone did get you know drastically hurt you know I mean I'm sure other libraries we have a form that they would fill out about it in an incident report basically stating you know mm -hmm. how they got hurt that kind of thing mm -hmm. cool um, I did like how you, you you were listing all those grants and, and I started typing in and looking them up to see all the different places you got them from and, and then realizing oh wait she's saying she didn't get this one and she didn't get this one um, and I think that's a good point that um, some libraries do apply for a grant and they get turned down and they figure well that's it you can't do it. Don't give up. There are tons of different grants and resources out there. Um, just because the one that you, I mean, we just announced our library um, improvement grants here at the Library Commission. And some libraries got them, some didn't. But if you got a great idea and a great project, look for something else. Look for some another, another place to get things from. Or as you did, you guys did there, combining multiple resor funding resources. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be a single um, place that will fund everything that you're doing. Yeah. So uh, don't give up. Absolutely. I mean, I can tell you that my team, certainly, we did not think, you know, that we'd be awarded the Fion Award. <laughs> you know, that's that's a one yeah. library thing, you know. So yeah. so they said that they had an unprecedented number of applicants that year, and oh, really? they chose us. You know. Nice, so yeah. Never give up. <laughs> and that one I did. Yeah, I remembered. I had seen the the news items or 
whatever when you did get that one and I actually had that as my list of oh that's a cool thing that Lindsay did yeah <laughs> I do like though the, the one that you didn't get the Disney creativity one um, that you, said you didn't get this time it seems to have a very uh, broad criteria just something that's creative well the app well like I said a broad application yes but the yeah. actual grant writing itself um, right. there's basically there's a report out there I can't remember what the name of it is but it's listed in the application materials that talks okay. about seven different categories of creativity and so oh, okay. part of the grant was actually Thank writing about okay. how yours would touch on those seven parts of creativity <laughs> okay so the good, th the good thing that we found out in our end was because we had put so much work into this grant and it was so long it became really easy to do all the other ones afterwards <laughs> True. oh I'm sure yeah definitely and that does get you thinking about you know having a bunch of cool stuff to build with is fine but it, well then what <laughs> so what is your programs? What are you doing with all this stuff? That exactly, you yeah, because yeah. that was one of the things with the Disney one. You know, they wanted actual examples of what you could do. So mm -hmm. my tab sat down, and we read each of the categories of creativity, and we were like, oh, well, maybe if you did, like, a team building thing, kind of like, you know, oh, on, like, Top Chef for Hell's Kitchen, where you see, like, a tag team challenge. You know, maybe we could do a <laughs> tag team building challenge, you know. So they come up That's with cool. all these different ideas, you know, that we could use. <laughs> cool. And it does seem obvious, you know, I think it's a pretty obvious that all of this is very educational, and I can see the uh -huh. creativity of just trying to figure out how things work. And especially, and maybe it's a good thing, getting something from China with zero instructions <laughs> that anybody can follow. Um, but let's just figure it out is exactly uh, yeah. definitely getting them out there. All right, does anybody have any last? Nobody's typed anything in while we've been chatting. But does anybody have any last questions or anything they want to ask Lindsay before um, we do wrap it up? I'm assuming since you haven't typed anything, you weren't really desperate to know something more than what she shared. But we'll give you a last chance to do that. Um, I have, as I said, collected, uh, I think I got all the different links for all the different resources and the, the, the um, kits that uh, Lindsay mentioned. Um, and also, um, will you send me your slides as well? We can post that up with the yeah. um, recording afterwards. Yep, we'll have the slideshow available for you too. It doesn't look like anybody's typing anything desperately. All right, well, you've got her contact info. Definitely, as she said, after the conference last fall, people reached out when they were starting to do things. Um, contact Lindsay to, for if you do have any more questions or anything you want to know about it. Do you have any last words for us today, Lindsay, before we do wrap up for the morning? Nope. <laughs> we're good to go. All right. Let's see. All right, great. Well, then, thank you so much for presenting. I'm glad I got to see all these fun things. I may either be getting some for me or maybe for some nieces and nephews. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> there's other, there's other, you know, side, um, you know, perks of some of the presentations here on the show. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I am going to pull back presenter control to my screen now to right. wrap up for this morning. There we go. Okay, so um, as I said, I was collecting um, the links. They're here on our delicious account um, here. Um, I'll have this. They're all tagged as Encompass Live and Build Collective, but I will have the, a direct link to all of this for you uh, when we do um, post recording. As I said, I mostly found the actual uh, main pages for the products, uh, but as Lindsay said, go elsewhere, find out where to purchase them. A few of them didn't have one, so I did go to the Amazon um, but you know, Amazon, Walmart, Target, all of those were Best Buy. Also, for some of them, um, were coming up when I was doing my searches. So definitely, you know, go out there and find whatever, um, wherever you can to purchase all of these things. Uh, so back to our main page here. The show has been recorded and will be here on our website um, on our Encompass Live page, uh, lnlc.nebraska.gov slash Encompass Live, which you can also just Google us and you find us anywhere. Um, right underneath our upcoming shows are our archives. This is where, uh, right by later this afternoon, um, the show will be posted and we will have here, this is last week, so I had a recording and a presentation. Um, let's see. This one also had links, so we'll have a recording will be up here, linked to um, Lindsay's presentation and a, a link to go directly to the links that I collected. Uh, when that is ready, I will email all of you who attended and everyone who registered for the show today to let you know when it's up and posted.
Um, so that will wrap it up for today's show. Um, I hope you join us for next week's show, which is uh, cataloging and digital collections, we'll say together, uh, metadata makeover. Uh, Omaha Public Library has been doing um, online digital library type things for a long time, uh, since you're the most, their oldest one is 1998, and had various different places where things were. This is a session that was a session from our last Nebraska Library Association annual conference that I did attend, and they had things in a bunch of different places and combined them all and, uh, into one and made it much easier for everyone to attend. Uh, access. So uh, Martha and Mary from Omaha Public Library will be on the line with us next week to talk about that. So please do encourage you to sign up for that or any of our other upcoming shows that we have on our schedule. We will, are always adding more. I'm in talks with other libraries for later in March and April, so we're always adding to the schedule, so keep an eye on our page. Also, uh, Encompass Live is on Facebook, so if you are a big Facebook user, I've got a link right here from our page, but this is our Facebook page. Give us a like over here. Um, I post reminders of shows here. I've got a reminder for today's show saying you can log in on the fly. Um, when the recordings are available, I post it on here, so um, please do, if you are uh, a big Facebook user, uh, give us a like over on our Facebook. Facebook page. Um, other than that, that wraps it up for this week's show. Um, a last thing I'd just like to do, actually, and I'll pop over here, is give a uh, promotion for a conference we have coming up here. Also, via this GoToWebinar online software that we use for our weekly Free on Compass Live, our annual Big Talk from Small Libraries online conference. Um, this is the thing we've been doing. This will be our sixth year of doing the Big Talk from Small Libraries. Our schedule is up. The recording is available. This is all sessions that are presented by um, libraries who are on the smaller side rather than um, the larger they are. Um, all of the FTE or population serve is less than 10,000 and some of them much less. Um, our schedule is up. You can take a look at it and you can register, see who our speakers are. And um, This is uh, will be on Friday, February 24th, all day long. I'll be running it through this same GoToWebinar software. So please do pop over to our Big Talk from Small Libraries site um, and sign up and join us. We also have a Facebook page for Big Talk as well if you want to follow along with what we're doing there. There it is. Yeah. So that'll wrap it up for today's Encompass Live. Thank you very much, everyone, for attending. Thank you very much for being with us this morning, Lindsay. Yep. And um, we will see you next time on Encompass Live. Bye-bye. <laughs>